You are now listening to the Dual Position Podcast. The boys are back to talk all things Super Coach all season long. Please welcome your hosts, Whisper and Brew. It was the night before Christmas. Supercoach officially opens tomorrow, uh, the 25th of January from all reports. So very exciting times. We managed to get all seven positions covered. Fullbacks, center wings, hookers, well, you name it, we've done it. Now we're looking at things probably a little bit more in detail, looking at your favorite sides, how they're going to shape up for 2022. Brew and I sat down, we've crunched numbers, both got our ladders, we've both got our projected 17s for the for round one, got all the injuries and whatnot, and uh, there's no better time, I think, to kick it off with the Broncos. They have had one of the busiest off-seasons, yeah, I, I can think of in recent memory, they finally got that organising seven. Um, you are listening to the Dual Position Podcast, I am your host, the SC Whisperer, joined, as always, by Brew SC. First day back at work, mate, after, after COVID, how was it? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Good to be back in the swing of it. Um, I'll save the hookers for you, mate. Um, Personally, I am super keen for tomorrow. Uh, I'm ready to get bombarded with questions and yeah, let's rock and roll. Yes, I've already been getting many, many team requests, which is cool. Um, It's just hard to sort of break them down now. We don't know so much, but hopefully we can uncover a few cheapies today or, or steer you away from some, depending on how we go. Look, we've got the Broncos to cover. As I said, the Broncos, a little bit underwhelming last year. They had a 7-17 seven and 17 record. Surprisingly, though, they had a 6-6 six and six record at home. So basically a perfect 500 at home. The issue for them was away from, away from home. One win, 11 losses. That really hurt them. So if they can pick up maybe three or four wins on the road and maybe another win at home, I could definitely push them up higher. Um, but yeah, and only the seven wins last year, but a lot of expectation on them this year. They scored 446 points, which ranked them 14th in the NRL, which averaged at 18.6 points a game, so basically three tries. They were also the 13th uh, ranked side for defense, conceding just under 700 points in 695, which is an average of 29 points a game. So 11-point differential for them. That will obviously get tighter. Uh, I don't expect them to have a winning record, but I think it'll be closer than 7 and 17. Um, mate, I've got the Broncos finishing ninth this year. Uh, I think they'll have a bit of resurgence, maybe one year away from finals footy, but they're definitely building the right pieces. Um, they've got some really good young talent. Obviously, the experienced half, Adam Reynolds, we'll touch on him soon enough. Uh, but you have them one spot higher, do you not? Yeah, I've got them finishing eighth this season, and there's probably two or three teams between that eighth and tenth where I think it could go either way, and I think it'll come down to you know, a win here or there. But I think last season they weren't fantastic, but they certainly built on the years prior where obviously they won a wooden spoon. I think having a guy like Reynolds, who's a both a good goal kicker as well as a controlling half and an experienced half, he's won a premiership. I think he might get them across the line um, in a few of those games. So I've got them finishing eighth. And as I said, between eighth, ninth and 10th, who we'll discuss over the coming weeks, I think it could go either way, but I just think the experience of Reynolds might steer them into eighth spot this season. Yeah, it's hard to hard to say. I've got them in eight. I've got them in ninth, sorry, but they could be as high as eighth or seventh. They could be as low as sort of 12th. Around there, pushing the, the finals footy in September, I feel. Uh, we touched on all their sort of ins and outs, mate. They've had a huge turnover. They've had... Uh, Xavier Coates leave for the Storm. They've had Tavita Pangai go to the Bulldogs. Brody Croft go to Salford. Uh, Anthony Milford has gone to the Rabbitohs, but that is up in the air. Alex Glenn, he has retired. John Asiata, he's been released. Ethan Bullimore off to the Seagulls. Isaiah Tass, your man, off to the Rabbitohs. Uh, Richie Kenner was released. Danny Levi went to Huddersfield. Ben Teo was released. Carmichael Hunt was released. Jesse Arthurs went to the Warriors. So quite a big squad turnover there, and they brought in a couple of acquisitions. Obviously, Adam Reynolds from the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Kirk Catewell from the Penrith Panthers, Brinko Lee from the Storm, uh, Corey Jensen from the Cowboys, Logan Bayless from South Logan, uh, Jordan Pierre from the Dragons, Ryan James from the Raiders, Billy Walters from the Tigers, and Tamara Martin. Really good to see him back in the NRL. Uh, yeah, fantastic just to see him overcome everything that he has come from. Uh, another thing to note as well, Jermaine Asako, uh, whilst contracted to the Broncos in 2022, he is off to the Redcliffe, sorry, not the Redcliffe Dolphins, just the Dolphins in 2023. So that could play... Uh, on the mind of, of Kevin Walters, if he wants to use him too much and, and whatever. Um, 
who are the, the big standouts that we've lost there, mate? Obviously, Coates off to the storm is, is a big one. Uh, being so promising, Pangai was a real solid force with them with, with Haas up front. Uh, but a couple of other ones, obviously, Isaiah Taos, uh, who we, you and I both rate highly. Uh, and even someone uh, like a Jesse Arthurs, I think, offered a fair bit. So let a few good, young, promising players go at the expense of a bit of experience with Adam Reynolds and, and Kurt Capewell. Even Branko Lee uh, has been around the traps for a fair bit. But obviously, um, yeah, Ryan James is also going to be a steady hand in the locker room. Out of those names brought in and, and taken away, any that spring to your mind that could have a, a good benefit on the on the Broncos or, or a bad one? Obviously, Adam Reynolds, I think we all know he's going to help that side immensely, but outside of him? Look, I, I actually don't mind the moves from the Broncos. I actually, like Isaiah Tass, I spoke highly of him on the Senate podcast, and I actually think he's going to play in NRL football this year. If he's named in round one, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I've, I've had him in my squad pretty much the entire preseason because I believe that there is a fair chance that he actually gets that left center spot. So he is a loss, but at the same time, you know, you got Stags, you got Farnworth, you got Cobbo, who I believe is going to play on the right wing this year for them, despite the fact he's probably better suited to playing in the centers or at fullback. So I don't mind the losses um, because I think they might have been necessary. I think they maybe need some certain gains. I think they really need a hooker. Um, I think they should be looking at the market for a real solid six. For example, like a Chad Townsend, for example, he's gone up to Cowboys in a real crowded uh, half scene, whereas if he was partnering, partnering um, Reynolds, for example, I feel like that would have been a much better setting for him. And I think the Broncos would be, say, better for that. But that's not to be the case. So I think Tass is a big loss. I don't mind the other losses. I think they were a necessary evil for the club. Um, Reynolds is a massive gain. It's exactly what they needed. They just need to get the right people around him now. Um, and as a smoky buyer of the year, I really rate the Ryan James pickup. Yeah, that won't be... F- won't be a huge impact when it comes to game day, but he'll be a guy that, that really does a lot of his work for the club off the field, and I think he'll provide a, a really good culture and just an experienced head. Um, you touched on the Broncos looking for a quality nine. Just off the top of my head, do you think someone like a Jacob Little would be a huge upgrade on someone like a Jake Turpin, or do you think Jake Turpin does a, does a decent enough job? Jacob Little was the first one that came to my head because of obviously the the Apicorosia news for next year, but someone like him, do you reckon they could look at him in, in next next year's offseason? Little's not the guy I'd be going for. I'd be going for his former deputy, I guess you would say, next season, and that's Jake Simpkins. Yeah. Or Jake Simpkin. Someone to build um, around. He was a Broncos junior. He, you know, Queensland grown, grown. So... He's probably the guy that if I'm them, I would target to get back on my books because he's going to be third in line at the West Tigers. He's a massively talented player. I'm pretty sure he played, you know, unders for origin for Queensland. I think he's going to be misused um, at the Tigers now. Obviously, up he's going to go there. He's going to be the number one. They've got Little. Little was ended up being the preferred guy last year. That's the perfect signing for them. Um He's certainly one that I would target off the top of my head. Otherwise, you could certainly go for the Roosters nine. Um, he's not going to be when you got Watson and you got Brandon Smith. He's going to fall out of favour next year. Uh, he about- won a premiership with the Roosters, proved himself to be a very good player. He's someone that they could target certainly. What about Josh Hodson? Just for a year or two, just to for, let's say they go with Simkin and they, and they take Hodgson as well. Simkin's probably not ready just yet. Yeah, but give Ho- Hodgson signed for Parramatta next season. He did. So he's yeah, kind yeah. Of, he's already accounted for. Otherwise, but like this season, for a player example, like him, for example, had, if they had a called Hodgson, the experienced head, and said, "Hey, come to the club," I just I never understand why they dropped. Um, what was his name? One that went to the Dragons. I've had a full mental blank. Oh, uh, uh, Andrew uh, McCulloch. McCulloch. Yeah, Andrew McCulloch. Andrew McCulloch. Why did they drop him? Yeah. Like, good defender, solid in the middle, experienced. He's the type of bloke that could have played 80 minutes. It made no sense to me for them to let him go because, what, he's not, he's not. He's, he's not, not a natural nine. Macca isn't exciting, but he'll never give you a bad game, which I think is you what... You don't the, necessarily I, need exciting. Which is, exactly, like, and that's the thing, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, like the, I guess the top sides, you look at them and most of them do have an exciting nine. Like Melbourne has Smith or Harry Grant, obviously, and um, South Sydney have Cook and Eels have Marning. And they're quite exciting nines. But, but they're, you don't the, they're the top bracket. It. I think they're, they're the ones that are really elite. And a lot of sides aren't going to get that elite nine. Macca is they ex- are also the top clubs, though. Of course. Uh, Macca, is is, Macca, he's not exciting, but he'll definitely never give you a bad game. And I think that's, no, what, I think that's what the Broncos job. need. Exactly. Uh, another another one that we touched on. Look, they've they've got their seven for the next couple of years. We've looked at their nine. Yep. Six is, is a hard one. Um, I'm not sure I agree with Townsend. I just feel like him and Reynolds are too similar. Um, maybe someone like a Scott Drinkwater. If Scott Drinkwater doesn't sort of find himself at, at the Cowboys, you go with an eyes-up player in him at six. But the, the thing I wanted to touch on is, is Tessie New. Look, they tried him out in the centres. Not the best defender. Did make a couple of errors there. But I really like him at fullback. Uh, he's really, really talented, really explosive, good ball player, very quick. Uh, I think he is the perfect foil to to someone like an Adam Reynolds. And I really like uh, Tessie New at fullback. And I feel like he could be the long-term guy there for uh, numerous years. Yeah, look, I don't know if I agree with the statement that you said about numerous years. But I would give him, say, all the way up to the first buy or even to the second buy to prove himself this season. If that doesn't work, I hand the reins to Selwyn Cobbo. At fullback, I don't mind Cobbo at fullback. Um, I think he's I think their Kevy, long-term fullback, and that's my issue here. I think Kevy Tessie sees him as great. a centre, though. That's the that's the issue. I think Kevy's come out and said he, he wants to see him play in the centres, which, yeah. He I don't, said I don't that know. it's his preferred position, but what he'll do is consider him in other positions. And what I think that means is basically Selwyn Cobbo is going to play on the wing this year. He's training outside Stags. And this is a hint that I think Jermaine Asako is going to play Q Cup this year mm-hmm. before he pisses off next season to Agreed. the Dolphins. That's what I took from it. I don't have Asako in my top 17 at Nor the moment I. for them. Um, I could argue that I would prefer Asako to Corey Oates, to be honest with you. But given he's leaving the club, I don't see the benefit for the Broncos to do that. So I would leave Oates on the left wing. I would play Cobbo on the right wing. And only Azako gets a chance for me if Tessie Neo is not doing the job at fullback, in which case I would move Cobbo because five years from now, I don't think Tessie Neo is going to be their fullback. Whereas I can see Cobbo being that based on what he did in the Q Cup. That's the only argument I have against Tessie Neo is I think there's a better player than him that's going to be slotted on the wing simply due to experience. We've effectively named that back line. We'll look at that very shortly, but... Is it a hot take to say that Asako may have held his spot longer than he should have because of his goal kicking? Because the Broncos never had a recognised decent goal kicker so that you've sort of handcuffed to pick Asako. And now you've got Adam Reynolds. There's not really a need to play Asako, especially if he's leaving the club. I think I think Asako shit in his own bed, to be honest with you. Excuse my French. But the Roosters wanted to sign him. And he didn't want to go because he thinks he's a fullback. He was given the opportunity at fullback, was proven not to be a modern age fullback, I assume, and lost that spot, lost his position, and eventually found himself back on the wing. The Roosters wanted to sign him on the wing, and he knocked that back because of his ego and because, you know, like the modern footballer, he wanted fullback money. And now it's kind of bit him on the butt because, you know, does he play fullback for the Dolphins? Depends if, if they the, don't get the marquee signings pay, yeah. that they want, maybe. But that would be the only way I believe that he does play fullback for them. I believe he will just simply be on the wing for the Dolphins. And he's kind of shot himself in the foot because you go to a top club, you impress, you get more money elsewhere when people try to poach you. And he, he missed an opportunity there. And he, he may have shot himself in the foot in terms of what his NRL career could have been. Yeah, I mean, I think Nico Hines is a perfect example of that. Sat behind, waited, waited, waited. Was never going to get in front of Pappenhausen. Injury to Pap. Hines come in, killed it. Now got a really good contract and playing um, the position that he wanted in, in the halves. So, um, yeah, I, I do think that that has struck players a, a couple of times. But, 
Look, we've mentioned basically our entire back line. Let's just knock it out of the way now. When it comes to injuries and suspensions, though, they are missing Brandon, uh, Brandon Pierre Cora for rounds one. He'll be back round two. Thomas Flegwell's out for the first three weeks. He'll be back round four with suspension. And Xavier Wilson is out with a knee injury. He's back sort of mid-season, no estimated time frame. Mate, I'll give my one to seven, then we'll give yours. We'll see who we don't agree on. At fullback, I do have Tessie New. On the wings, I have Oates and Selwyn Cobbo. In the centres, I've got Herbie Farnsworth and Katoni Staggs. And six and seven, I've got Albert Kelly and Adam Reynolds. Anything different, one one to seven with you? No, that no. is my one to seven. Yeah. Um, I've got Herbie playing on the left um, this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, inside Corey Oates, I've got Staggs playing on the right inside Selwyn Cobbo. I think forwards will have some differing opinions I did I look. Think so. I did look at um, Billy Walters to, to play six or potentially play fourteen. I think there's a better utility at the club though, so we did leave Billy Walters out. Uh, the starting front, the starting front row, I have Ryan James and Payne Haas. Uh, I think that's Ryan James is in there due to the suspension of Tom Flegler, as we touched on. Um, so I think he could be an option for the first three rounds, but he's going to have to hold his spot long term. And I just worry that the Broncos bench is very forwards heavy, so I think Ryan James could fall into that territory of what he did last year at the Raiders and just be stuck playing 35 minutes and scoring 40 points and it's not really worth it. So Haas and Ryan James at nine, I've got Jake Turpin in the back row. I've got Jordan, Ricky, Kurt, Catewell at 13. I've got Pat Carrigan. Okay. So apparently I didn't do my research. I had Tom Flegler at eight. I didn't realize that he was suspended um, I had Payne Haas, I had Kurt Capewell, Jordan Rickey, and Pat Carrigan. So we've basically got the same one to yeah. one to thirteen. Um, I, I would Ryan have had James. I would have had Flegler over James if he was fit too. So by the sounds of it, we had the same Correct. side if he was. James if he was is on my bench, so yeah. Um, mate, as you and I both found out yesterday, you and I need to do more research because we had this big ten minute spiel on why Reese Walsh should be a utility to go to Latrell Mitchell, <laughs> only for us to find out that Reese Walsh was suspended. So. That was great. Um, on the bench, though, I've got Kobe Hetherington at 14. This is where I debated putting Billy Walters, who can fill in at six, who can fill in at nine. Probably a bit smaller play 13, which is why I've given Hetherington the nod. Uh, I've also got TC Rabadi, Keenan Palacia, and Reese Kennedy uh, as my bench, guys. All right. So my bench was Kobe Hetherington, Brian James, um, Palacia. Uh, Reese Kennedy and my 18 was TC Rabada. So we effectively have the same one to 17. And just so the viewers know, we're doing this blind for these podcasts. We're actually not discussing our one to 17s before the podcast, obviously before the positional podcast, we have a little chat and whatnot. These were flying blind so that this is completely live and flesh on the air. Um, Fresh on the air, sorry. Flesh on the um, air. So, flesh on the <laughs> air. Well, if you can see my beautiful bald head, there's plenty of flesh up here. So, mm. um, yeah. So, effectively, we've got the one, one to seventeens exactly the same. So, fully fit, fully fit. I've let's got re- see what happens round one. Fully fit. I've got Reese Kennedy dropping out with Ryan James going back to the bench and Flegler coming in. Um, I which- had I, I full full strength. I had Rabati as my 18 okay. and Reese Kennedy stays in the 17. So that would be the only difference in our 17. I don't think that affects Supercoach a whole lot, to be honest, but no. either or. Um, which does bring us to Brennan Piacora. He doesn't make our 17 fully fit and full full strength. I think he gets his crack. I just don't think it's in the first half of the year. No, and I agree with that. Um, we can be hopeful he's a bottom dollar cheapy, but I don't see it from round one. I think... Some people have earned their place. Uh, Rabadi played really, really well at the back end of last season. Reese Kennedy can slot in second row, front row. So I think that's a benefit. Um, Palacia tore the house down when he played last year and Ryan James didn't come to the club to play Q Cup. So for me, those guys are the four. Um, also, got Cor- make also got Corey, Corey Jensen from the Cowboys as well, who's a very solid hand, who Kevy might prefer to go him over here, Corey, just for another another season or two. The Broncos, like, in theory, they actually have a really good squad. Yeah. They just need to build on it. And whether or not Kevy's the right coach, I don't know. You know, taking over an origin team of legends and winning origins doesn't prove a whole lot. Um, if a... If a Robinson or Bennett. a Bellamy or a Bennett had this site, top, I think they would six. push it into the top eight, hundred percent. And I think over the course of say two to three years, they'd 
be potentially a top four side if they found a six and a nine Do you that wanna, they can rely on. I but, don't. I don't think Kevy is the guy, but I think Kevy is going to. I think Kevy is going to provide a whole lot of culture, and I think that's something that the Broncos have been lacking for the last four or five years. Is 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 culture? Yeah, and I I totally agree with that. So I see the purpose of Kevy. If Kevy can get them going in the right direction and then they start pushing that top four bracket and then they can go, you know what? We're close, we're close. Let's go and find our coach, like our premiership coach, 100%. In the next five years, I can see them being a top four side that pushes for premierships. They just need to really get through the next two to three seasons without blowing the whole rig up. And, and letting certain players leave. They've already let Reese Walsh leave. They've already let Sam Walker leave. They've already let other guys leave that they never should have lost. And that set them back. They now need to go, we've got a pretty good young side of young fellas here. Let's push forward. Let's keep faith in them and build on combinations and build on experience and go from there. So that's why I'm quite... I really think they can make the eight this year. I think they were close enough in enough games last year where they lost tight ones that if they can pull from experience from guys like, you know, what we've got, James, Adam, James Adam is an Reynolds, experienced Ryan head. James, Kirk, Adam Reynolds Kirk, Kirk is an experienced head that's come in. Outside of that, you know, Payne Haas, I suppose you could call an experienced head now. He's, he's won Origins with the Blues. If they can draw from that and win the tight games, I really think they can finish seventh or eighth this year. But if they finish 10, 11, 12, it wouldn't surprise me. They're kind of in that 8 to 12 bracket. I don't know if this will get laughed at when I say it, but I do think Anthony Seabold was the guy for them. I just think he was oh, the, I I just think he was the guy just, five years too early. Yeah, I think... After, after, after Wayne left, I think they needed to just... The Broncos are a club built on the back of the old boys. They always want to be oh. around the club. They always want to have that experience there. And I think Seabold came in and just tried to rip up the Wayne Bennett playbook too quickly. I like Kevy. I don't think Kevy is a premiership winner, but I think he's going to build the club to a level where they do get a, a good coach in. Do I see a Bellamy a Robinson going there? No. But I do like the Seabold move. I just feel like it was, it was a couple of years too early. I feel like they weren't built for Seabold just yet. And he was the one that, that, that copped the blame, unfortunately. Look, Seabod's turned into a bit of a meme these days, and I can't excuse anything that he may or may not have done reported in the media. So I can't comment on those things, but I don't think he did as bad of a job as what people make out. Bennett went back to the club, did nothing. You know, now Kevy's come in and he's had to kind of pick up the slack and he's playing from behind. So I don't think he's doing a terrible job. But to say that it's all Seabold's fault after Wayne Bennett nuked the Newcastle Knights and it took them years to repair, he nuked the Dragons and it took them, well, they still have Still repairing. <laughs> they still repairing. So I don't think you can really necessarily blame the people that came after Bennett because there's a little bit of a trend here now. And as good of a coach as he may be, he has left a couple of clubs in ruins now. It will be very interesting to see how Redcliffe go next year because the side, the, Dolphins. the side doesn't look crash hot on paper and I'll be very interested to see how they go. In saying that, Anyone though, that calls them anything but Redcliffe, <laughs> Dolphins, is dead to me because that's what they should be named. Go, this, go the Dolphins the Dolphins is ridiculous. They are Redcliffe. <laughs> All right, mate. You said this Broncos side has a lot of talent and with any quality coach, there could be a top six, top eight side. Studs, duds, X-Factors and cheapies. We'll get the cheapies out of the way. I don't think any of these guys will be there rounds one to ten, but they're ones to keep an eye on. And Brandon Pierre Cora, we've touched on, be in a lot of sides when Supercoach opens. Look, if he's there by origin, that's a win for us. He doesn't need to be there round one. I know it's ideal if he is, but sometimes those mid-season cheapies are exactly what you need to cash out. Shit blokes that are stuck at 280K that you haven't been able to turn over. Even if it's for 100K, sometimes they are the ideal blokes, so don't panic. So, Brandon Pierre Cora, Corey Pakes. I've got my eye on Corey Pakes because a couple of injuries and he's there. Uh, he's played at nine before. He looked okay. He's got to get through. He's got to get through Jake Turpin for mine. I don't know if Cora, uh, Kobe Haddington is the guy to fill in at nine. 
I think Corey Pakes is probably next off the cab. But Corey Pakes isn't versatile enough to nab a bench spot. So I definitely feel he's first cab off the rank. 205k halfback hooker. Um, definitely some room there for him. I think Kobe Hetherington is wildly overrated, to be honest with you. Um, and I know that uh, Corey Pakes has been rumoured to train the house down. So he's definitely in probably the top 18 to 19. He's on the radar and he could be the perfect cash out for a Randall in rounds six to nine. If something goes wrong. If, if something goes wrong, you're a brave man to trade Grant out if nothing goes wrong. And the last I didn't one, say Grant. Oh, I think you said Grant. <laughs> I said Randall. Oh, I said Grant. I was like, why are we Come trading out Grant? What kind of a noob oh, that's... would trade Harry Grant unless he's injured? Oh, exactly. Moving on. The last one. <laughs> I reckon one of the most hyped rookies that I've seen, Ezra Man, 5'8", halfback, 175K. Plenty Not the of, right time. Plenty of talk about him. The unfortunate, yeah, the unfortunate thing is Adam Reynolds is there, and they've got a plethora of uh, of talent. But he is definitely one to watch in the lower grades. Some of the black book for when um, for when Reynolds does leave for Ezra Man, all the hype in the world. And look, who knows? A couple of injuries, he could snag a five eight spot as well. Look, shout out to Wolfred. I know he's got a huge chubby for him. Loves it. Loves Ezra not, Man. It's not the season for Man, if you ask me. He's like next season. I think he'll be a hype cheapy. But I don't think this is the year. I think you've got Kelly. Um, you've got Billy Walters. There's someone else who I'm forgetting about that you've you've also got. There's just too many people in front of him. Just play for, you know, play Q Cup, kill it, make a name for yourself in Q Cup, and next season be the hot topic of Super Coach in 2023. Are there any other cheapies uh, that you want to talk about quickly or have we covered the sort of the main three? Half their sides cheapy, so <laughs> not really. One's Most survival, of their sides, yeah. you know, are in cheapy territory for me, so probably not. I think there's two bona fide guns here. No prizes for guessing one of them. And the other one, I've got Katoni Staggs. Uh, average 62 last year, priced at an average of, I think, 49. He's going to fall somewhere between that high 50s, early 60s. Definitely value there at 533k. Uh, sorry, 433k. Uh, big value there with him on, on the right-hand side next to Aro. Yeah, 100%. I'm not going to say a bad word about uh, Katoni Staggs outside of the fact that he won't be goal-kicking this year. So you need to limit your expectations. Part I will that. be a brave man not to start with him, but at the moment I'm planning not to start with him. Interesting. And obviously the other one is Payne Haas. I'm not really going to talk about Payne Haas. He is the best front rower in the game. Best front rower Certified super coach. Gun. Yeah, lock him in. You have, yeah, you have to have him. He, he's at a bargain price. You know, he got dragged down by the minutes crap that he dealt with at the start of the last season. You know, halfway through the well. season, they realized that, you know, he's not a 50-minute player. Even if you're not going to play him for 80, he needs to be playing at least 65. It feels like Kevy noticed that. He ran with that, and now he's at a bargain price. So just lock in your 70 points every week. Go, Payne look, Haas. go look at Payne Done. Haas's stats uh, after Matt Lodge left and then after TPJ left. They... they skyrocketed so yeah definitely lock and load him when it comes to the broncos duds mate i have two i have albert kelly look albert kelly great last year 60 average but this year he's priced 528k he is available five five eight half but oh it's just way too much money for albert kelly unfortunately i wouldn't call him a dud I would say that he's not a guy to start the season with. I probably should. But I, I probably should change think... Dud to Trap. We'll, we'll put it. We'll change yeah. Dud to Trap because Dud's not a fair thing. So yeah, Albert Kelly Trap. Okay, so oh, I think he's a trap to start the season, but I don't think he's a trap entirely. I think at some point in time, he if he goes on a period where he plays like, I don't know, I don't have the draw in front of me right now, but if he plays the dogs, the Cowboys and the Dragons back to back, then who knows? Maybe you jump on and get a hundred average for three weeks and he might be an option at some point. But to start the season, I'd agree he's a trap. And the other one, mate, Jermaine Asako, 494K available. Center wing fullback does not make my 17. Yeah, look, he's not in my 17 either, so I'd 100% agree that he is a trap. I also have four X factors before we're going to finish up. Just before I do those, do you have any other dud slash trap players? Yeah. So my biggest asset in the side is Payne Haas. Shock, um, shock me. Simply 
a must have. Um, that probably doesn't come as any surprise um, that I pick Haas. I just think he is an absolute must have. Anyone that doesn't have him is kidding themselves. You know, even if he gets off to a slow start, he loses 50K. So be it. Uh, trade's worth more than that. So for me, he's 100% lock him in as one of your front row forwards. My biggest trap is Adam Reynolds. And I don't mean this from a Broncos perspective. I mean this from a super coach perspective. I've seen a narrative that believes that, you know, Reynolds going to the Broncos is going to have more controls. He's going to get more involvements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Past actions, you know, they predict future actions. And I just feel like he is set in his areas. He's going to average exactly the same as he has for the last five years. Even if it increases his output, the Broncos are a worse side than what he's been playing for. It'll even out. Take a step back. Think about it logically. There's better options from a super coach perspective. I think Adam Reynolds is a trap. Yeah, I feel people are getting caught up in this Adam Reynolds narrative. Um... Oh, it's annoying me, to be honest, because I just, I just, he's going to the Brisbane Broncos. He's not going to the Melbourne Storm. If no. he's going to the Melbourne Storm, then I might see it. But he's not. He's going to the Broncos, who had the wooden spoon and then last year, I think, finished 12th. So don't expect the world. He's also, like, he's he's not a Jerome Hughes type player who's going to create and he's going to make line breaks, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. He's going to be involved. Absolutely. But week in, week out, unless he's getting five try assists, I don't really see the upside. He's probably losing eight points a week in goal kicking as well, which is two conversions. I think that's, that's a very safe thing to say. So that's fair. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and finally, um, if we're going on my X factor for the Broncos, so on Cobo, yeah, that's I'm really high on him. Uh, I just think if he, if he finds a confidence and finds his position within the team, if they let him move around a little bit on the wing, like some wingers do who are, you know, explosive type players, I just feel like he could be involved in a lot. We saw Coates last year get 11 tries in a poorish Broncos side. Uh, if he, he's got the similar speed and agility that Coates has got. So I feel like he can certainly break the line and go the length. I just feel like if he's in a range of getting 10 to 15 tries for the season, on top of that, he has a higher base and a high ability to create. I really feel like he could have massive potential for the Broncos and be a real smoky on the season as a real X factor, super coach wide, but most definitely for the Broncos. Bad comparison probably, but similar to the way that Fergo plays, when Fergo likes to just drift in, you know, take a couple of shit hit ups, go back out in the wing, sit there for three or four sets. Well, that that is similar, but yeah. on top of that, he has more of an ability, I believe, to break the line and potentially to set up a try purely by putting someone else in a hole through his speed, which Fergo doesn't quite have. So the Fergo comparison, I don't mind. That plus plus is what I feel like Cobo could potentially be. And I might be dreaming, but he's definitely in my side to start the season and I've got high hopes for him. I also have Selwyn Cobo in my X Factors list. You've said enough on him. I also have Jordan Ricky, 454k available at 2RF. Last year averaged 51.8 inconsistent minutes, inconsistent sort of game time. Really liked what I saw from him. He does have the ability to break the line, break a tackle. If he can get some good ball from Albert Kelly or Adam Reynolds, depending on which side he lines up on, definitely can see him improving on that 52 average. Uh, yeah, he's just getting older, getting bigger and getting stronger. So really like Jordan Ricky to have a... A building on the year that he had last year and also Tessie New. Uh, I'm as high on Tessie New as you are on Sel and Cobo. Uh, probably not so much from a super coach standpoint. He's 511k, but he's available at center wing. So if the Broncos do find their mojo, uh, he averaged, I've written 68.3, but I think that's 58.3. Uh, I think I've pressed my fingers too wrong here. Based off that price, I think it's 58.3. Um, yeah, look, I mean, the Broncos, they play. South, the Bulldogs, the Cowboys, the Warriors, and the Roosters. So, three pretty gross. Uh, sorry, two pretty gross games in between the three juicy ones. Sassy New could do something for the first four or five weeks, and then you move him on. Uh, but I'd be looking at picking him up on a, a cheaper price. But yeah, really like the idea of picking a center wing. Sorry, picking someone in your center wing that is basically playing fullback. Uh, Tessie New, sixty-three point seven average at fullback. So. That's the numbers. You weren't incorrect. I don't, I don't um, know, yeah, I don't know where I've gotten. I, my I've gone to my spreadsheet. I've checked it from our center pod. Yeah, 63.7 average. And, and I agree. I believe if he was available at fullback only, I'd laugh at you yeah. and say you're an idiot. But the fact that he's available at center makes you go, you know what? 
a center that can average 60 plus is money. So a center that's at 511, 300, that could potentially average 60 plus in a rising Broncos squad, which feels like is where we're both going is that the Broncos will be on the rise this year. Not a great deal, but at least potentially shows that he could be a minimum 55 up into say 65 to 67 average bloke available at center at some point, if not to start, he could be a genuine option. So hundred percent. I like that call. Oh, good. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. All right. And we are back. Um, basically, yeah, finishing up on the Broncos, Brew and I both have them and their stocks rising. We were just touching on Tessie new and yeah, man, like I'm just really excited with the fact that he averaged what mid sixties in a really poor Broncos side in a side that we just expect to get better. Uh, it'll take a brave man to pick him from round one because they do have uh, South and then the Roosters in rounds one and five. They have a really juicy rounds two, three, and four, uh, but it could play dividends. Uh, I know that I picked Jermaine Asako last year uh, to start the season. Look, he was 200k cheaper, but he played fullback, but I think he had a 70 average for the first five rounds. So definitely some stocks there for, for Broncos fullbacks. And if they do get better, then I really like them. Um, and yeah, I didn't get your thoughts on Jordan Ricky though, mate. Like, are we expecting him to have a better year than what he had last year, building on it, being younger, uh, sorry, getting older, more experienced? I, I love his ability to break the line. Uh, the thing that goes in the fa- in the favour of Ricky big time is Adam Reynolds for me. We know he can put a right edge back rower over the line, and Ricky's going to be that guy. So an uptick in line breaks slash tries uh, is certainly on the cards for me, for Ricky. Uh, if he averaged 55 last season, then I can certainly see him starting to push into that 60-plus barrier. So I don't hate it at all, to be honest. Um, you're actually getting me to the point where I might have a look at him after we get off this podcast and and look further into his base and whatnot and see if he might be an option in the mid-fours, I, someone that I could take. I am obviously off Liam Martin. I've made that pretty known that I'm not a Liam Martin fan. And I feel yeah, like... Yeah, I prefer... If we, so just while we, it came it came to me, I prefer Jai Arrow over yeah. Liam Martin. Like I, he, I made, he didn't a, cost I made a, a lot post. More, we, made a post on Arrow. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I, I, I need I, to start I, following you. I can put it. Oh, geez. Um, I'll actually I'll, I'll bring the Arrow post up. So I literally said that word for word. Um, Arrow started the season like a house on fire. You guys have listened to me for a while. Know how much I was against Jai Arrow last year. Um, he started off the first three rounds like a house on fire. Average sixty four minutes dropped down. Played in the middle. Whatever average shit and then towards the end of last year uh, had a th- an average of like 53 points through through the, the back row um but when he played to rf when he played decent minutes he was averaging like 60s so i prefer jay arrow i prefer jordan ricky over liam martin as well so yeah both of them around 450 probably have ricky higher than arrow and that's gonna give me some inspiration tonight for a post i was thinking of something to post tonight so i might do a play profile on jordan ricky so off, a, off on a little bit of a tangent there, but um, yeah, I think the moral of the story is Brew and I are pretty keen on the Broncos to bounce back. Uh, one in the NRL and two in Supercoach, I think they're going to have more assets that we look to target, especially during the, the middle of the year. Yeah, look, I hate to praise the Broncos. Anyone that knows me on social media knows I like to bash my best mate over the Broncos and in particular Ben Hunt, but I do see that them, they, sorry, they are going to be a great improver this year. I'm not tipping them to be the biggest improver. I'll, uh, I'll leave that a mystery for our future podcast, but the one of the big improvers for the 22 season are the Broncos for me, yes. Yes, that's going to wrap up the Broncos preview. Went for about 40 minutes or so. Uh, probably a little bit longer than what Brew and I want these to go for. These team previews are going to go from anywhere from half an hour to 40 minutes. Similar format, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully we touched on some, some plays that you were looking at. And you get an idea of, as to where our heads are at when it comes to our round one teams. Uh, we'll try and keep you guys up to date with the current suspensions and injuries and whatnot and any kind of news that breaks throughout the week. But that's going to wrap it up for the very first, uh, yeah, teams breakdown. I'm very excited that we got all the positions out, mate, considering Supercoach is open tomorrow. So for anyone that, um, yeah, this if this is their first podcast listening to us, then go back and listen to the full catalogue of all the positions that we have done, done broken down, Brew and I. Uh, specifically sat down and tried to plan to get those out for when Supercoach was was released. So hopefully uh, you guys go back and listen to them and enjoy. Uh, YouTube has been popping off fantastically. More subscribers by the day. Views are getting 
great. So always turn that red bell on, turn the red subscribe button to a grey one. That'll make me very happy. Spotify listens. We're up there with some of the biggest sport podcasts in the country. So very, very humbling to see that. And yeah, when it just comes to sheer super coach, you guys have been getting around the podcast fantastically. And uh, that's all I can ask for. As always, mate, they've, uh, I've very much enjoyed having you on and ciao for now. Cheers, guys. Bye. Ciao for now.